Continuing along with our introduction of the principal components of a voice over IP system, I would say that moving voice in IP packets was one of the components of a voice over IP system. So let's just take a bit of time to understand uh, what exactly we're talking about when we're discussing packetized voice. One scenario, of course, is two people speaking directly over an IP network. So what we would be discussing here is me talking into a telephone. And the telephone handset has got a speaker and a microphone. And the microphone is a device that creates a voltage analog of the sound pressure waves coming out of my throat. So there'd be two wires coming out of the microphone in the handset that has a voltage on it, which is an analog of the strength of the sound pressure waves coming out of my throat. That gets fed into a codec, and the codec digitizes the speech and then codes it, or we sometimes we call it compressing the speech, to code it into a standard format. Then we take chunks, usually about 20 milliseconds worth of speech. We put that eventually inside an IP packet, and we put the IP address of the destination telephone on the front of that IP packet. And then that goes into a LAN frame, and then there's all of the LAN addressing. And we pump these packets inside frames through a whole bunch of routers in the network. And at every intermediate node, every router in the network, it'll pull in the frame, extract the packet, look at the IP address or possibly an MPLS label, and we're certainly going to discuss that later on, make a routing decision, put the packet back in a frame and send it on its way. So it goes up into the routing software and down into the LAN software and every one of these things. And then at the far end telephone, it's a LAN device, so it brings in the LAN frame, extracts the packet out of the frame and gives it to the IP software running on the IP phone, which extracts the 20 milliseconds worth of compressed digitized speech out of that IP packet and gives it to the codec in the far end telephone that then turns that back into a voltage analog and we stick that into a speaker and the voltage causes the speaker's diaphragm to move back and forth creating sound pressure waves that then travel down the person's ear canal and cause little hairs in your cochlea to be tickled that cause neurons to fire to go up to the central processing part of your brain. Now, every one of those chunks of speech better arrive on time, or else you're going to start hearing <laughs> things. <laughs> you see, a chunk of data arriving late in a live conversation is the same thing as not arriving at all. I mean, what are we going to do? Put the listener's brain on hold while we wait for the data to arrive? And on an IP network, there are no guarantees when the packet is going to arrive or whether that's even going to happen at all. I mean, go look at the standard for IP. There's nothing about that in there at all. It's just completely best efforts. So we're going to have to add things into this story. One of the things we're going to have to add in, of course, are sequence numbers on the packet. But more importantly, we're going to have to have a way of controlling the delays across the network and then taking into account and correcting for what small delay and variance in delay there is. And the variance in delay is called jitter. To control this, we have to have quality of service techniques on the IP network, and that's what MPLS is all about. And to then deal with the jitter that falls, or, or delay, that falls within the allowed range, then we have to have jitter buffers on the far end telephone. And we're going to go through this whole story. This is just the introduction.